Good evening, and once again, welcome to Tap Raven Cyber Academy. We're thrilled to have you joining us tonight, and before we get started, I'd just like to give a shout out to Tyson, David, and Derek, first and foremost, for doing the awesome things they do, supporting our channel and giving, and there's not a day that goes by where we're not thankful for just that. All right, so that was our first shout out. Second, going through all of our videos, we have 100 plus videos that go on to support what we're talking about tonight, but if you like those videos, go ahead and give us a like and subscribe. Also become a member if you'd like, that way you get most of our updates that are immediate on different products that are being posted, different updates to our channel, any live streams. You get to comment, you get to know us even further and have recommendations, like I said, and we love to get to know our audience just as so much as they get to know us. So with that being said, I'm done talking for this part anyway, but let's get started on our video tonight. wondered how secure your network really is? In this ever-evolving digital age, network security has never been more crucial. With the increasing number of network threats, the potential impact on businesses and personal data is substantial. From global corporations to personal home networks, no one is immune to these threats. Security breaches can lead to significant financial loss, damage to reputation, and in some cases, the complete destruction of a business. But how does a network attack occur? What are the steps involved? Let's take a look at an article from the Hacker News that provides a step-by-step -step demonstration of a real-life network attack simulation. This simulation, based on the MITRE ATT and CK framework and Atomic Red Team, covers six steps from initial access to data exfiltration. The aim is to showcase the common techniques used by attackers. The key steps include spear phishing for initial access, tool transfer, network exploration, credential dumping, lateral movement, and data exfiltration. This simulation highlights the importance of multiple choke points in defense strategies and the need for a holistic security approach. It's not just about having a strong wall at the entrance, you need multiple layers of detection to prevent successful attacks. The simulation also stresses the significance of a defense in depth strategy and proactive threat hunting. It's like playing chess where you need to think several moves ahead of your opponent, you need to understand their strategies, anticipate their moves, and devise your defense accordingly. Remember, the only thing standing between the attackers and your valuable data is your network security. It's not just a technical issue, it's a business issue, a personal issue, and above all, a societal issue. Understanding the process of a network attack is crucial in enhancing your defense strategies. And that's what we'll be doing in this series, dissecting each step of a network attack to help you fortify your network security. Stay tuned. The first step in any network attack is gaining initial access. Now you might be wondering, how does that happen? Well, let's take a common example. Spear phishing. It's a term you've likely heard before. But what does it really mean? Spear phishing is a targeted attempt to steal sensitive information, often through deceptive emails. The attackers go phishing, so to speak, but with a specific target in mind. Imagine you're an attacker. You have your sights set on a particular network. Your first move? You send an email. It seems innocuous enough, maybe it looks like it's from a trusted source, perhaps a co-worker or a well-known company, but hidden within that email is a malicious link or perhaps an infected attachment. And what happens when someone clicks that link or opens that attachment? The attacker gains their initial access to the network. Now we've got to remember, spear phishing isn't some back alley tactic. It's widely used and for a simple reason, it's effective. It takes advantage of the human element, our natural curiosity or trust. And once that trust is exploited, the attacker is in. They've got their foot in the door, their initial access. It's important to note that spear phishing isn't the only way attackers can gain initial access. There are numerous methods, but spear phishing is one of the most prevalent. It's a reminder that network security isn't just about the technology, it's about people too. So, how do we protect ourselves? It starts with awareness, understanding the risks, and knowing how to spot the signs of a spear phishing attempt. Because remember, the initial access is just the beginning. It's the gateway for attackers into your network. Once inside, an attacker will start to transfer their tools. Now this might sound like a scene from a heist movie, but it's actually what happens in a network attack. The tool transfer step is where the attacker introduces their malicious software into the network. Imagine it as an unwelcome guest bringing in a bag full of lockpicks and other dubious devices. These tools are not physical, of course, but digital. They are designed to exploit vulnerabilities, bypass security measures, and ultimately give the attacker more control over the network. 
The tools can be as simple as scripts that automate certain tasks or as complex as custom-made malware designed to stay hidden while it carries out its nefarious deeds. They could be used to map out the network, collect sensitive data, or create backdoors for future access. The scary part, these tools can often blend in with regular network traffic, making them hard to spot. That's why it's so important to have robust security measures in place to detect and block such intrusions. In short, tool transfer is the attacker setting up their workshop inside your network. It's a critical step that enables attackers to carry out their plans. Next, the attacker will start to explore the network. Having gained initial access and transferred their tools, the cyber invader now embarks on a journey of reconnaissance. This stage, referred to as network exploration, is a critical step in the attacker's playbook. You see, networks are complex structures, intricate and interconnected much like a spider's web. And just as a spider knows every strand in its web, a successful attacker needs to understand the network they've infiltrated. They'll probe the system, mapping out its architecture and identifying potential targets for further exploitation. It's akin to a burglar meticulously casing a house before deciding which window to pry open. During this exploration, attackers are looking for several things. They want to know the network's structure, the devices connected to it, and any vulnerabilities they can exploit. They're seeking out the crown jewels of your network, the servers holding sensitive data, the systems controlling critical functions, the workstations with privileged access. Network exploration is a silent and stealthy process. The attacker moves quietly, careful not to trigger any alarms. They employ various techniques to stay under the radar, often using the network's own tools against it. But here's the good news. This phase of the attack also presents an opportunity for defense. By monitoring network activity, we can detect unusual patterns that may indicate an intruder's presence. Unusual login activities, unexpected data flows, sudden changes in network behavior, these are all red flags that something might be amiss. It's like keeping an eye on the spider's web. If you see a strand trembling when it shouldn't, you know there's something there. And with the right tools, you can catch the intruder before they get too far. Network exploration allows attackers to plan their next moves. But remember, it also gives us a chance to spot them, to understand their tactics, and to prepare our defenses. This chess game isn't over yet. The fourth step is credential dumping. So, what exactly is credential dumping? Simply put, it's a technique employed by cyber attackers to extract user authentication credentials, such as usernames and passwords, from a system's memory. These credentials are then used to gain more access and control over the network. In the realm of cyber attacks, knowledge is power, and the more information an attacker has, the more damage they can do. When an attacker successfully dumps credentials, they can masquerade as a legitimate user, bypassing security measures and gaining access to sensitive areas of the network. Now you might be wondering how do attackers dump credentials? Well, they use specific tools designed to interact with the system's memory. These tools can read, interpret, and extract the stored credentials. It's a bit like having a master key that can unlock any door in a building. But here's the kicker. Credential dumping is not easily detectable. It often slips under the radar of traditional security measures because it mimics the actions of legitimate users. This makes it a particularly dangerous and effective method for attackers. The implications of credential dumping on network security are profound. It's not just about unauthorized access to sensitive data, it's about the potential for lateral movement within the network, escalating privileges, and ultimately data exfiltration. It can lead to a full-scale network compromise if not detected and mitigated in time. In essence, Credential dumping is like giving an attacker a VIP pass to your network. They get to see and interact with everything, and the worst part? They look like they belong there. It's a chilling thought, isn't it? But don't despair. Understanding the threat is the first step towards mitigating it. By knowing what credential dumping is, how it works, and the implications it has on network security, you're already on the path to safeguarding your network. Credential dumping can significantly increase the attacker's control over the network. Once they have the credentials, attackers will begin lateral movement. This phase is akin to a game of chess, where the adversary strategically maneuvers within the network, aiming for their ultimate targets. Lateral movement is often the silent killer in a network attack. It's the stealthy, under-the-radar phase where attackers cloaked in legitimate credentials move from one system to another. They're seeking out the crown jewels of your network, whether that's sensitive customer data, intellectual property, or the keys to your digital kingdom. 
The danger here is that unchecked lateral movement can turn a minor breach into a major catastrophe. It's the difference between a thief who's nabbed a single password and a mastermind who's gained access to the entire building. Without adequate controls, an attacker can traverse your network unhindered, potentially accessing every nook and cranny of your digital infrastructure. This is where the importance of network segmentation comes into play. Consider it like compartmentalizing a ship. If water floods into one compartment, it's contained, preventing the entire vessel from sinking. Likewise, network segmentation divides your digital landscape into separate, isolated segments. If an attacker infiltrates one segment, they're contained within that area, unable to spread their malicious activities further. Preventing lateral movement is not just about containment, though, it's about detection, too. Monitoring for unusual patterns of behavior can help flag potential intruders making their moves. Perhaps a user who normally accesses files during business hours suddenly starts downloading large amounts of data at 2 in the morning. These anomalies can be the first sign that something's amiss, providing a crucial opportunity to stop an attack in its tracks. Remember, lateral movement is not an end, but a means to an end. It's a stepping stone in the attacker's journey, a path that can lead them straight to their targets. By understanding and addressing this phase, you're not just patching a hole in your defenses, you're actively disrupting the attacker's game plan. Lateral movement can lead attackers straight to their targets. The final step in a network attack is data exfiltration. Let's dive into what that means. Data exfiltration, often referred to as data extrusion, is the unauthorized transfer of data from a computer. It's the act of cybercriminals making off with the goods, so to speak. This is the stage where the attackers have achieved their mission. They've infiltrated the system, navigated through the network, collected the data they want, and now they're ready to take it. But how does this happen? Well, data exfiltration can occur in various ways. Sometimes attackers may use simple methods such as emailing data to themselves. Other times they might get a bit more creative using covert channels like DNS tunneling or ICMP tunneling to sneak data out without detection. They could even take advantage of cloud storage or social media platforms to hide their activities in plain sight. Regardless of the method, the end result is the same. Valuable information, whether it's intellectual property, personal data, or sensitive corporate information, is stolen. And this theft can have serious consequences. For businesses, data exfiltration can lead to significant financial losses. It can damage a company's reputation, leading to a loss of customer trust, and it can also result in potential legal implications. For individuals, it can mean identity theft or other personal attacks. But remember, data exfiltration doesn't happen in isolation. It's the final step in a complex process. By understanding this process and each of its steps, we can better prepare and protect our networks. We can create multiple layers of defense, ensure our detection systems are robust, and make it that much harder for attackers to reach this final stage. Remember, knowledge is power. The more we understand about these attacks, the better equipped we are to defend against them. Let's not make it easy for these cyber criminals. Let's secure our networks, protect our data, and make data exfiltration a much harder game to play. Data exfiltration is the end game for network attackers. Now that we understand the attack process, how can we enhance our network security? As we've seen, network attacks can be complex and multifaceted, making them challenging to detect and prevent. However, one of the most effective ways to enhance network security is to adopt a defense-in-depth strategy. This approach involves creating multiple layers of security to protect network resources, ensuring that if one defense mechanism fails, others are in place to maintain security. Think of it as a medieval castle. The moat, the high walls, the guards, and the drawbridge all work together to protect the castle. Similarly, in the digital world, a defense-in-depth strategy uses multiple security measures, from firewalls and intrusion detection systems, to encryption and multi-factor authentication, all working in harmony to shield your network from threats. But that's not all. It's equally vital to stay proactive in threat hunting. This means continuously seeking out potential threats before they can cause harm, rather than waiting for an intrusion to occur. Proactive threat hunting involves systematic and ongoing searches across your network to detect and isolate advanced threats that evade existing security solutions. It's like having a dedicated team of guards constantly patrolling your castle, ready to spot and tackle any suspicious activity. Moreover, it's crucial to adopt a holistic security approach. This means considering all aspects of your network, from the hardware and software, to the people and processes. 
A strong network security posture is not just about having the right tools in place. It's about ensuring your team is educated about possible threats, implementing robust security policies, and regularly auditing your network for potential vulnerabilities. Finally, don't forget the importance of multiple layers of detection. Just as a single security measure is not enough, relying on a single detection method can leave your network exposed. Use a combination of signature-based, anomaly-based, and behavior-based detection methods to ensure you can identify a wide range of threats. Understanding the network attack process is the first step towards improving network security. By implementing a defense-in-depth strategy, staying proactive in threat hunting, adopting a holistic security approach, and using multiple layers of detection, you can significantly enhance your network security posture.